All right, gang. So this is gonna this video is gonna serve as our introduction to the heart anatomy, um, as well as the pathway that blood flows through the heart and through the body. Okay, so we're gonna start with this page just because it gives a nice big overview, kind of gives us uh, some landmarks so we can kind of talk about as we go through things. So keys, uh, everything in blue. When you look at a diagram like this, everything in blue is really not indicating artery versus vein. It's indicating oxygen oxygenated blood versus deoxygenated blood. So I think you'll remember that oxygenated blood is usually bright red. Um, so everything in this picture that's, that's red is going to have lots of oxygen in it. And all the parts that are blue are going to be deoxygenated. So imagine this blood right here is leaving your brain. Okay, It's already dropped off, off all of the oxygen. And it is going to then flow down through some capillaries and uh, venules and veins into the right side of the heart. Okay, so the deoxygenated blood is going to return to this right side of the heart here. Um, and then we'll get to the vocab, the right atrium, and all the stuff as we go through. Then it's going to pass down and be pumped back out to the lungs now. Okay, so it gets pumped out to the lungs, and in the lungs, it's going to be refilled with oxygen. So we're going to focus over on this, uh, what the, is the, the person's left side, um, our right. Uh, so here, we're reoxygenating the blood, okay? And then it comes back into the left half of the heart, the left atrium, the left ventricle. And then when that gets pumped out, it goes up and out this aorta. And the aorta can then take it up back up to the brain, or it could go down this way, down the abdomen, go down to your toes, or anywhere in the body. Uh, and then it repeats that process. So if it's coming back from the brain, it's going to just come back into the right side of the body and, and do the whole thing. Now, uh, what that means is really blood goes through the heart twice. It's like a double trip. It comes in, and the whole right side of the heart here, okay, this whole right side of the heart is there to pump blood to the lungs. So it gets oxygenated, and then the blood comes back, and the whole left side of the heart, okay, is responsible for pumping the blood to the body. All right, so let's look at that um, in a little bit more detail here. So this is the, di the worksheet that you guys have. Uh, the top part of it here has this diagram of the heart. And you'll notice that each of the parts are labeled. So as I go through, I'm going to use a different picture because it's a little bit uh, nicer to see in, some, uh, in a color picture here. Um, but uh, I'm going to keep pointing out these numbers throughout. So I would fill them in as you're looking at it. And the next part of it, at the bottom, we're actually going to start with this first, guys. We're going to talk about the pericardium and the epicardium and the myocardium and the endocardium first. But I'm going to do that on another diagram. So you're not going to see this sheet, but you need to kind of fill this in as we go through it. So what this diagram is showing you is it's it intended to show you the pericardium. That's the, the really important part here. So, um, And you'll see pericardium kind of all over the place here, right, pericardium. Uh, and what it is, it's really a fibrous bag, and it's it's got some other stuff. It's got some epithelial uh, because it's an exposed surface. But the, the most important part is the fact that it's got this fibrous pericardial sac, right? So here we go. Um, and the heart sits inside of this sac. It's, it's a bag that the heart sits inside of. It's attached to the diaphragm on the bottom here. So this is the attachment here to the diaphragm. Uh, but it allows the heart to really move around a lot. And your heart, when it's beating in a chest, moves around a lot. And we're going to see a couple of videos um, that show you that guy. So um, this sac allows it to kind of give it some structure, kind of hold it in place, because you wouldn't want it moving around a ton and, and potentially ripping apart some of the blood vessels or any of the attachments um, that go into the heart, right? So this, if this ripped, that would be horrible, right? Um, so you've got some sort of anchor, but it's got this loose bag that really kind of holds it in place. So the next three vocab words that are on there are uh, epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Right. Uh, so this is the muscle of the heart. So take a look at what they've done. They've taken a cross section here and they've pulled this out. So here's that pericardium again. That's that pericardium layer that sacs around in the heart. Okay. And then the layer that would be on the actual outside of the heart. So if you cut away the sac, the part you would see will be referred to as the epicardium. And it's got a, a thin layer of epithelial and some connective tissue. Um, that kind of cover it, and it's the outer covering of the heart, okay? And we don't go into any more detail than that, right? The myocardium, remember this myo prefix refers to muscle. This is the muscle of the heart. So all of this portion here, in fact, we'll do it in blue because it'll show up a little better. All of this portion here is your myocardium. It's the meat of the muscle. It's what gives you the strength. It's um, We're going to get into how it contracts uh, in a separate video, um, but that's the, the muscle of the heart, okay? And then the endocardium is the inner layer right here. It goes from here to here, 
okay, this chunk, and the inside is epithelial. This is simple squamous epithelium, okay, and the blood would be right here. So this is the part that would be lining the chamber. So blood would be filling inside of here, okay. So if you opened up somebody's chest, you would first see the pericardium. If you cut out the pericardium or folded that back out of the way, you would see the epicardium underneath it here. So this would be the epicardium, okay. Um, inside, making up most of the heart, is the myocardium, the muscle here the, uh, that provides the force. And then if you cut open the heart, and we're looking at where the blood would fill the heart, um, the inner lining edge uh, would be the endocardium. All right, so make sure you get those down in those slots there if you have to back it up, but uh, you should have those definitions down. Pericardium, epicardium, myocardium, myocardium and endocardium. So now we're going to tackle how the blood flows through the heart. Um, and I've put numbers on this diagram to kind of match up with the ones that are in your sheet. So if you wanted to pause it, you could do that. Um, or you can kind of come back to it in a moment. Um, but here's our big overview, guys. So all the blood that returns from the body is going to come back uh, ultimately into two big veins, okay? Um, the top one here is going to be the, uh, let's do this in red. Um, will be here with 1A, that's the superior vena cava. Pretty much that brings back all the blood from about your mid-chest up. So um, your arms and your head come back through the superior vena cava. So all the blood comes back from your brain, from the, your, your fingers, hands, all that kind of stuff comes back through the superior vena cava. And then everything below that comes back through this inferior vena cava, which is 1B on your sheet. Okay, uh, So they flow in here and here, okay? Both of those are gonna flow into the same part of the heart. They're gonna flow into the right atrium, okay? So an atrium is like the um, entryway. Um, so a lot of houses have atriums where it's kind of like an entryway. Um, and that's really what this is. So it's a um, little atrium. Uh, you'll see it when we do the heart uh, sheet part dissection. They, they aren't really big chambers. They're almost like little balloons on the outside of the heart there, okay? Um, but the blood flows into here from those two spots, okay? And then we're gonna pass through our first valve, and we'll talk about what the valves do in a moment. Um, but our first valve uh, is, uh, can sometimes be referred to as the right AV valve. I prefer tricuspid. That's the way I was taught. I think that's the best bit. But it's all this white, kind of looks like a balloon right here, guys. Um, so that's the tricuspid valve. So the blood will flow through there, and it will end up down in here in our um, right ventricle. So I'm changing over to black here because I realize that will look a little bit better. So now we're in the right ventricle, okay? Uh, notice all of that is still marked as blue. This is deoxygenated blood like we just talked about. I just dropped off all the oxygen in my brain or my toes or wherever, and it's coming back. So when we pump that out, we need to pump it to the lungs, okay? So this blood is going to get squeezed up and out here, okay? So we're going on out, and we're going to go through um, our second valve, which is going to be the pulmonary valve. So pulmonary means lungs. You're going to see that term a lot in here, guys. Uh, so you got this pulmonary valve uh, taken to the lungs, and you'll notice once it comes out here, it's going to split. You're going to get that portion going over to the left-hand side. Remember, everything's reversed because you're looking at it it's, as it's sitting in somebody else's chest. This is You're looking at the heart as it sits in my chest, okay? So this is going to the left lung, and then the right lung kind of goes underneath here and actually comes out this side, okay? Uh, so on your diagram, um, I don't think we differentiated them. We just labeled those in general as number six, but you would actually get a... Um, See how it splits at the top of number six? You That would split and go into two different pieces, okay? Uh, yours is a little more of a schematic drawing versus this is what it looks a little bit more like in the body, okay? So now off it goes to the lungs. And you notice on your sheet that I showed it going to the lungs and it's picking up oxygen and getting rid of carbon dioxide. And then it's going to come back and it's going to come back through um, the pulmonary veins. So remember, veins are always going to bring blood um, back uh, to the heart. Okay, and arteries are always going to go away. Um, so these are the pulmonary arteries leaving. Okay, pulmonary arteries that just left, took it to the lungs. Now they come back through the pulmonary veins. And in this diagram, it only has shows the left pulmonary veins. Um, the right ones are kind of on the back side of the heart, so you won't be able to see them in this diagram. Um, but that would be 7A would be the um, right pulmonary veins, and 7B would be the left pulmonary veins on your sheet. Okay. Um, all of that blood flows in now. Notice it's nice and red because it's full of oxygen. It's going to flow into this left atrium. Okay, uh, So that left atrium receives that blood, um, and the blood then will flow uh, through our third valve in the process, um, which can be called the mitral valve, guys. I've always referred to it as the bicuspid. 
So if you want to put it as bicuspid, you're probably going to hear it more from me that way. Um, mitral's not wrong. A lot, of, a lot of people like to use that. I just always have taught it as bicuspid. That's its alternate name, just like tricuspid. I think that works better. Okay. Um, so we're now through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Okay, so the left ventricle is this bottom part of the heart. Um, and that's going to squeeze the blood up and out. Um, and you won't be able to see it here, but right underneath you have our last valve. It's called the aortic valve. On yours, you can see it much better. That's why I like the schematic drawing that I gave you. Um, so you can see that aortic valve, which leads into the aorta. Okay, And the beginning of the aorta is called the aorta, ascending aorta, and then it branches off and goes to all the destinations of the body. So this is the... Um, it's not on your sheet, but you have a part that's called the brachiocephalic chunk. Well, brachioencephalic means arm and head. Um, so this branch right here goes to your arms and heads, right? Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of blood vessels that kind of come off of there, all right? All right, a couple last notes before we go on, guys, and it's labeled on your diagram. A uh, really important vocab word for you. Uh, is this intraventricular septum. It's this wall right here in the middle of the heart um, between the two ventricles. Um, uh, it kind of keeps, I mean, if you look at it, guys, you've got uh, deoxygenated blood over on this side, and you've got oxygenated blood on this side, so you got to keep those separate. Um, when people talk about like holes in the heart, that's where you'll usually have a hole in a heart, like if a baby's born with a hole in the heart. That septum is usually not complete, and you get the mixing of that blood, and that can cause problems. Okay. Uh, the other big thing I'd like you to notice is quickly notice the thickness of the ventricle. So over here, that's how much muscle you have on the right ventricle. And over here, look how thick the muscle is on the left ventricle. The left ventricle is much thicker, which should make sense. Where is the right ventricle pumping the blood to? Well, it's going to the lungs, which are right next to the heart. The left ventricle has to pump the blood to every part of your body. So some of it's going up to your brain, some of it's going down to your toes, but you need a whole lot more, more muscle to squeeze that blood out there. So you actually can tell that. And that's going to be huge when we do our heart dissection. Uh, you will be expected to identify the right and left based upon the thickness. That left ventricle is much thicker than the right ventricle. All right, so make sure you've got those labeled on your worksheet. Um, and you may have to go back a little ways. I've made a mess of this picture enough that it's going to be difficult to... Um, to see it, and so that's going to be a little bit challenging from that standpoint. But um, but if you have to back it up to before I drew all over this, that and make sure you got your picture labeled. All right. So before we move on and we start talking about the valves and how they work, um, I just wanted to quickly redo the exact same thing over on this diagram to make sure it works. Okay. So you've got your superior vena cava up here, your inferior vena cava, uh, bringing back the blood from the upper part of the body lower part of the body in here. Um, actually, really, we should make that blue, right? Because deoxygenated blood, deoxygenated blood coming in, um, comes into this right atrium. Um, when the uh, blood will flow from the right atrium through this tricuspid valve down into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts, it's going to pump it out through this pulmonary valve, out through the pulmonary artery, um, and split and go to each lung, right? So each lung will get uh, half of that blood. In the lung, we pick up all that oxygen, and now it's going to come back as oxygenated. Okay, so here it comes in, here and here. Um, and so now you've got these pulmonary veins bringing back, the, the right and left pulmonary veins bringing the blood back in uh, to, the, uh, to the left atrium, okay, through the bicuspid or mitral valve uh, into the left ventricle. Okay. And from the left ventricle, we're going to squeeze it out the aortic valve, out the aorta, and from there it can go to anywhere in the body. A okay. uh, little side note, they love this one on, on Jeopardy and trivia shows. Uh, right here, this is going to be your most oxygenated pair of veins in the body. Okay, So veins, remember, are always bringing blood back to the heart. So the pulmonary veins are the only ones that really are loaded with oxygen because they're coming back from the lungs. Whereas this is going to be your, right here, this artery is your, going to be your bluest or your most deoxygenated artery in the body because it's the only one. All the other arteries are going to be carrying oxygenated blood out um, because this is going to the lungs. So these are uh, very common. You'll see them about once a year on trivia. They kind of squeeze those uh, or on Jeopardy, things like that. You'll squeeze in that, that is, um, those two ideas. All right, so the last bit I wanted to show you guys real quick is how the valves uh, work and what they do. Uh, so this is, notice how this has been cut, first of all. So look at this picture up top here. So we're slicing open the heart. 
Um, and here you have your pulmonary and aortic valves, and notice they're closed. Uh, so the blood that's up above, like looking from your view, coming down onto this, can't go through those. Um, but the uh, bicuspid and your tricuspid valves are wide open, so that blood can flow down through those. Okay, And from the side view, it will look like this. Right, so here's this valve, right? Here's the aortic valve. Blood cannot come back down because it's sealed shut there. But this valve is wide open and lets the blood flow right on down um, into this left ventricle. Okay, uh, when the ventricle contracts, we're going to switch both of these pieces, so that's what you'll see. In now the these valves, your bicuspid and tricuspid valves, are closed. They're sealed up, so the blood's not flowing through there. Um, uh, but now it's going to squeeze out through the aortic and the uh, pulmonary. So let's side, and there you see it. So the, um, because the pressure, look at the squeezing here. That's what they're trying to show you here and here. They're showing this squeezing. Um, because of that squeezing, uh, this valve gets popped up and shut, so no blood goes that way. It all gets directed up and out to where we want it to go. Um, and that's really the job of the valves, guys. You want to make sure the blood's only flowing in one direction. So as the heart beats, you're going to get blood in, then out, in, then out, every time. Um, and the lub dub that comes from, like, a, when people talk about, like, a heart beating, it's like, dun, 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 dun. That sound is, for the most part, these valves kind of snapping shut. Um, so as they open and close, open and close. Um, and we'll show you a couple of animations that'll give you that. Uh, one picture, for, so one last picture here for you guys. Um, here is uh, an actual valve, so this is going to be, uh, the semilunar valve, um, and you can see blood would be flowing right at you through this valve, would be squirting right at you, um, but then in between um, heartbeats, the blood would come back and hit this as a wall. It wouldn't be able to flow back down towards the bottom here, so it could come out towards you through this one and then be prevented from backflow there. Okay, so big ideas and biggest concepts I want you to take away out of there is uh, the idea that the blood's going to flow through the heart twice, right? It goes through, uh, comes back from the body, goes into the right side of the heart, and the right side of the heart pumps it to the lungs. Goes, when it comes back from the lungs, it goes into the left side of the heart, and the left side of the heart uh, pumps it out to everywhere in the body. So um, it actually makes this kind of double trip through the heart. It goes into the heart, then the lungs, then back to the heart, and out to the body. And then it repeats that over and over. Each drop of blood is going to do that. Okay. Uh, the other big idea I wanted to stress to you guys, it only goes to one destination. So when it does that, when it flows down to like your toes, it's going to flow right back up to the, um, the heart and lung cycle there. That's what I refer to that as. So it comes back into the heart, then the lung, then back to the heart, and then it can go out to another destination. But it doesn't kind of meander around the body and hit lots of destinations. Just one destination and back. All right. Hope that helps. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure you come see me.